said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Evangelist David Bybee has been called and anointed by God to fulfill the scripture. Now, let's join Evangelist David Bybee in the worship service at the Crossroads Community Church, Carthage, North Carolina. He is worthy, he is worthy. Praise the name of the Lord. Those of you joining by television and by radio, I want you to get your Bibles out if you're able to, and let's have church together. Those joining by radio, the number you want to call is 1-800-774-5255. 1-800-774-5255. Toll-free number anywhere in the United States. If you need prayer, call us. If you need a healing, call us. If you need deliverance, call us. If you need salvation, call us. 1-800-774-5255. 5255. Those here in the United States uh, that are watching by television, you can see the number on the screen or you can write us, but get in touch with us and there'll be a child of God there uh, ready to help you out. You know, I want to talk to you uh, a little bit today, a little bit different from what I normally preach because I'm normally preaching, putting down uh, all kinds of sin and everything, but we're not going to be worried about the sinners today as much as we are about the Christians because the Christians are just about as bad as the, the ones out there in the world living in sin. You can't really tell a whole lot of difference between Christians and, and the sinners or people that claim to be Christians. But anyway, Jesus loves us so much. And, and uh, my last message in Argentina uh, this past week was about his love. And, you know, he, he doesn't like the sins that you've committed, and all of us have sinned. Every one of us are, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He doesn't like the sin, and he doesn't like the, the lives that we might be living, but he loves us. He loves us. He, he chose you. I mean, it's just like if you go to adopt a child or something and, and you pick out the one you want, that's the one you want, period. You want that one. And that's what he's done. He's chosen us out of the world and said, I want you. And there's multiple millions that have gone to hell and are going to hell that could have been chosen the same day that I was chosen. There's a lot of people that 40-some years ago that could have been chosen that are in hell today, but God didn't choose them. He chose me. He knocked on my heart's door, and that makes me thank him, and I'm thankful for him, but I want to talk to you today about those of you that are joining by television and radio and those of you in the congregation. I'm going to boast in the Holy Ghost for just a couple of seconds. 130 true salvations this past week. 130 true salvations this ministry is responsible for. God did it all, but he used this ministry to reach them. Now, I'm not talking about mama told 12 children to come up to the altar. I'm not talking about daddy said, because your cousins are up there, y'all going up there. I'm not talking about that kind of sal- I'm talking about true salvations where the power of the Holy Ghost got a hold of their hearts put them under conviction, and they came crying and asking Jesus to save their soul. They came to the realization that hell is a literal place, that it's real, and that Satan has control of their souls, and they needed a redeemer, and they were told that Jesus is that redeemer. Catholicism is very, very prevalent in Argentina and in your uh, Central American countries, South American countries the islands, and Catholicism is leading multiple millions down the wrong road. And it's going to be revealed probably within the next 12 to 15 months uh, what Catholicism is all about. It's going to be revealed to many, many millions and billions. And those of you joining by television, I'm not placing the Catholics under conviction. I'm trying to, or uh, under condemnation, I'm trying to warn you. And, and that's what this ministry is all about, is trying to warn the people to read the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Read Revelation. Read Revelation 17, 18, 19, and see if you don't see the Catholic Church. I mean, John, the revelator, he described the, the gowns and the robes that the cardinals and the bishops and the pope, he described it down to the color. He described it around to the gold, the, 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 the rosary, the pearls. He, he describes it all right there in the Bible. What is the, the mystery whore? The mystical whore, the mystery whore of Revelation. 
He describes it. Read it and then praise God. You'll see what I see. If, you'll just, if you don't see it, get down on your knees and say, Father God, anoint my eyes. Anoint my eyes that I might be able to read this word and see through spiritual eyes instead of through natural eyes. Read it. And those of you joining by television, I dare you, read the book of Revelation 17, 18, 19. Well, 17 and 18 will get you through it. But watch how John, 2,000 and some years ago, described the Catholic Church to a T. The Pope, the cardinals, the bishops. And if you don't know anything about Catholicism, go to your computers or go to your local Catholic church and make a note. Take a picture of the bishop. Take a picture of the, the, the cardinals and take a picture of the, the priest. Take a picture of everything. Come back home and lay your pictures out and then read the Bible and see if the colors don't match. The colors match to a T. He didn't miss a single thing. And, and yet, he says it's the false religion of the last day. Sixty-eight million is what they report that the Catholic Church has killed and slain. Sixty-eight million Christians since the beginning, since Nimrod and his wife got involved. Sixty-eight million. Did six million in just a five-year period or something like that kill five, six million? Catholic Church? Yep. That's not counting the multiple millions that have been misled. Anyway, I didn't come here to talk about that either. If you have your Bibles today, turn to Philippians chapter 1. And I was reading this this morning. And as I read this, Philippians chapter 1, I'm going to begin at verse 3. I got to seeing how Paul, what he was talking about. Have any of you ever been in a dire need and somebody come along at the right time and helped you out? Boy, I have. I have. <laughs> I have. I mean, I've been in a situation where my back was against the wall, my front was against the wall, and both sides was against the wall, top and bottom. I was bound. Couldn't turn in any direction. But God sent a Moses. God helped me out. And I got to seeing where Paul was writing from here because if you're a pastor, now all the pastors that are joining today, and I know that you're out there, I'd like for you to call in and tell me whether or not I'm right. Uh, I know that the, some of you will call in and uh, might have something to say about it, but uh, I'd like for those of you that feel like I'm, I'm hitting the nail on the head today to dial the number on the screen. I won't tell your congregation you called. Just Just call. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now, pastors know what I'm talking about. And, and I'm talking to you, congregation, and I'm talking to all of those of you that are joining by television that have supported the ministry. Paul is writing, and I'm saying it the same thing. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Every time I'm riding down the road, every time I'm I'm doing anything, and, and, and it seems like God brings the congregation up to me, in front of me. And I go to thanking God for each one of you. You may not remember me during the day. You may not even think about me during the day, and that's all right. I wish you did, but if you don't, that's okay. But there's probably not a day goes by, and I don't know of a single day that goes by, that I'm not lifting up the congregation 